You're tuned in to The Andrew Lawton Show. On the previous show, I spoke to Pastor Jacob Rayom of the Trinity Bible Chapel, who at the time was just a few days away from having received a court order shutting down the doors of his church, locking the doors, changing the locks, actually, at the behest of Ontario's Attorney General. And this was going to be for one week. It locked out the church for one particular service, and there was another court date on Thursday in which the Ontario Attorney General sought to have this order extended to keep the church locked out. And after a rather brief hearing, the judge granted it. He said nothing has changed. That was basically, and I'm paraphrasing his point, he said the pandemic circumstances, according to the government, have not changed. And the position of the church, which is that if they're allowed in the building, they're going to have service, has not changed. So the order was extended. Now, the big issue with it is that this is now an indefinite order. The church will be locked out of its building indefinitely until such a time as the parties can go back to court and have a sanctions hearing that deals with things in a bit more of an evidentiary way, or until the restrictions go up to 30% capacity as opposed to the 10-person cap they're at now. And the reason for that is that uh, the police were never charging the church when they were allowed to have 30% capacity in the building. So that seemed to be a rule that they either were not breaking or not in an ostentatious enough way that the government was knocking on their door, or should I say pounding on their door. Now, right now, we have a situation in which a pastor and his congregation are indefinitely locked out of their church building in a country that supposedly values freedom of religion. Now, this is huge, and I was speaking earlier on in the show with Premier Jason Kenney about this, and he said he respects that libertarian spirit, that freedom-minded spirit that people in Alberta have, and I would say, uh, frankly, people in more provinces should have. The problem with folks like that now is that they are finding the boot of government on the back of their neck, pressing them up against the concrete ground if they want to exercise those very rights and those very freedoms. And I should say, and I, I'm not a lawyer, I sometimes play one on TV in the sense that I cover legal cases, so I've had to develop somewhat of an understanding about how these things work. But people were asking me on Twitter the other day, well, hang on, how is this constitutional? And in short, it's not. And the government in the past has conceded that its restrictions violate the Constitution. They've simply said that they are justified in violating because of that so-called reasonable limit section of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. But none of that factored into the case. The constitutional question is something that has to be weighed in a bigger trial down the road. This was just a very narrowly focused question. The judge specifically said, listen, I I'm not here today to look at the constitutional questions. I'm here to look at, are they going to keep breaking the law? Are they going to keep violating this order? And if so, are the restrictions still going to be there? And if so, all right, we've got to keep those locks on the doors. Lisa Bildy, who I believe has been on this show before, if not, we should get her on. She was a tremendous, well, is a tremendous lawyer. She represented a True North and me when we were going up against the Leaders' Debates Commission. She's with the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms. Lisa Bildy did a, a tremendous job in court. She said, listen, there there is a symbolic, there's a, a violation of these uh, parishioners and uh, these pastors' rights, yes. But she said there's also a symbolic attack on the fabric of a liberal democratic society when the government is locking church doors. And an interesting point I have to raise here, a lot of people, in fact, a lot of Christians, emailed me after my previous show this week and said, well, hang on, my church is on Zoom. Why can't this church meet on Zoom? My church is doing streaming on YouTube and Facebook. Why can't this church? And, and there's been a lot of dispute within Christianity, within Christian denominations and individual churches about this very question. As I said, my church has gone virtual. The only people in the building when the restrictions are capped at, I think, 10, are the people that are responsible for being on the stream. So the band, the pastor, the videographer, and so on and so forth. And the reason I bring that up is to say this. Churches can decide to do that. The whole point of valuing individual liberty is that you value one's rights, one's right to set their own boundaries, to say, listen, you know what, we don't want to open up, or we want to open up with restrictions, or we want to reduce capacity, or we want to do all of these things. That's what choice is about. So allowing Trinity Bible Chapel or Grace Life Church or any other church to open does not force anyone to open. It doesn't force anyone to do anything. 
The question comes down to this. Who gets to decide? Should individual churches get to decide what is an essential form of worship, or should the government get to decide? And the fact that the government has said you can have a wedding, you can have a funeral, means that they understand there is a part of religious practice that cannot take place in a virtual forum or not exclusively in a virtual form. So the government recognizes that some practices of faith must be done in person. At that point, it's just a question of degrees. And if the government concedes that certain things cannot be replicated, that is not a situation in which there is a valid substitute to worship for some denominations or for some churches that can take place online if church doors are shut down. And by the way, I say shut down. If you're talking about a restriction at 10 people or 15 people, a hard cap, it's basically a shutdown. You're, you're not dealing with capacity. You're dealing with a church that could be the size of three Costco's that can have 10 people or a church that's the size of, you know, a little cubicle at Tim Hortons can have, a, not cubicle, they don't have cubicles at Tim Hortons. Maybe in the remote work era they do. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Booth, vestibule, whatever. Uh, a church that's that size can also have 10 people just crammed into it like a clown car. So any of these hard numbers that do not reflect the size of the building are completely arbitrary. They, they absolutely are made up and scratched on the back of a napkin and passed off as good policy. And this is the problem. On one hand, we have government saying, listen to the experts, follow the science. And on the other hand, no science to be found on a lot of these things. And I spoke with also from the JCCF, James Kitchen, a lawyer who's been very good on fighting a lot of these lockdown tickets a couple of months ago. And James was saying that eventually the government is going to have to pony up its evidence, if any exists, that says masks work, that says lockdowns work, that says all of these restrictions are valid. Eventually they're going to have to show their science. And I think it'll be interesting to look at the date stamp on that. One thing I know from going through my own battle against the uh, federal government over the Leaders' Debates Commission is that the dates on documents are very revealing in some cases because we found that the Debates Commission had a policy that effectively prohibited us from attending the debate, but the policy came out the same day that they made the decision to prohibit us. So they actually wrote a policy around a decision they had already made. And I bet a lot of the so-called science that's backing up some of these restrictions is actually going to have come out after the restrictions were determined and after we're being told that we have to follow the science. And I, I bet that is going to happen, that a lot of the science is going to be retroactively applied to the restrictions the government wants to justify. Thanks for listening to The Andrew Lawton Show. Support the program by donating to True North at www.tnc.news.